Good evening and welcome to Connecting Point. I'm Jim Madigan. Tonight, we begin to look back at local media through the years, TV, radio, and print. I sat down with local TV news veterans, Kathy Tobin, Ray Hirschow, and Dave Madsen, to talk about some of the personalities we've known and some of the changes we've seen. Well, there's been an incredible, incredible transformation uh, in this business when you look back over the years. And I've been uh, at our station now for 48 years, going back to the good old radio days. Uh, but what we're seeing today is really unprecedented. Uh, you know, we've got uh, uh, a marriage with Channel 3 out of Springfield, ABC 40, Fox 6, Meredith Corporation uh, owns them now. So it's a, a network, really, of, of more news coverage in the area, more reporters, uh, more news time that we're, we're filling and giving people new stories. And so uh, it's, it's worked out well, but it's given us certainly much more recognition and exposure in the market, if you will. But in years past, I mean, many years in Springfield, it's a two-station market, mm -hmm. yeah. and it was friendly competition. I, I remember Mike Gareffi, one of the first days I was yeah. on the road, his news director now at 22, and cameraman there for many, many years, saying to me, he said, look, management wants to fight. Let them fight. We're out on the road here together. We're going to help each other out if we have to. And it was, short. it was always, you know, a trading. Yeah. I, I lost a tape. Hey, here you go. Make a copy of ours. Or what, you know, there, there was always a lot of good give and take throughout the years. There was a, we knew everybody. and I, mean, I met Ray first, I think, in 1973 when I was at HMP. We played softball games together. He was a good oh, baseball player, radio. too, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> right in the old radio days. But, um, yeah, it's like it, it, life's too short, you know, and that's, that's the way we still look at it now. And, uh, and I think that's why the, the blending of when the Channel 3 people came over and they're all over on Liberty Street with us now, it was really smooth. And, uh, you know, and they, they work very efficiently. They're very good, good folks. And, I mean, because it's it, right now, I mean, you know, we still have some photographers, and we do, do you know, two-person crews, but for the most part, the trend is going to MMJs, you know, where they, uh, they go out and they shoot and they edit and they write their own stuff. Yeah. So. One-man band. Yeah. 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 Well, Kathy Tobin and I were just saying that. We, we go back to the days when I was in commercial. She was at Channel 4, and he became news director not long after I left, which I always wondered about. I wondered if you waited specifically until you got me out of the way. Or, but, I didn't want uh, to have to deal with you, Jim. Yeah, well, it's, it is a fate worse than death. I'm going to be my supervisor because I'm kind of unsupervisable. But uh, it was, you know, you went out with your photographer. You got the story. You came back with it. It's, it's a whole new world now. You're, you're putting it on Twitter. You're getting it up on Facebook. You're setting up your own live shot. It's wild now. I think what's so interesting, first of all, that I have had the honor to work with all three of the gentlemen on this set, which is which was a pleasure. But um, but truly, when you just look at my career of 30 years in broadcasting, you know, I did the first live shot at the station, the first news satellite at the station. I was the first woman news director in the market. So just in that short time, the changes that evolved, and that's only scratching the surface. I think why we see the longevity that we do in this group is that because we all went into it because we were fascinated by the technology and the ability to change and adapt. And I think that's still what we all enjoy about the medium, is that we, we can use it to tell better stories and to do better news coverage. And we're doing more news, too. I mean, if you look back to when we started, when I started at 22, we did, uh, did cut-ins in the morning, but it was 6, 7, and 11. And I think you guys were doing 5, 30, and 11. Exactly. Just to give an example, Jim, I mean, technology has changed tremendously over the years, as it has in, in most businesses. But our business is basically technology driven. It's advanced so much. Give an example. When I first started, we'd go out and cover a news story. I'd go out with a photographer. We would take with us a 16 millimeter Bolex camera yeah. where you shot film mm -hmm. for your news stories. You would have come back to the station after you shot those stories and really process the film through a chemical process. You'd stick the reel on, you'd go through chemicals, develop the film, it'd come out on a reel. You'd literally have to, when you edited it, splice it up, chop it up, and glue it together on another reel, put that reel on a projector, and that would be your news story. That's the way your news stories would, would run. And you didn't change from that. That no. was it. Yeah. And that, and that was it. Uh, so you can imagine it was very time-consuming. Say we went out at 9 o'clock in the morning, we'd have to be back at 1 o'clock to get our film processed, developed, and then edited to get on for 5 or 6 o'clock. Now, goodness gracious, with the equipment we have now and the digital equipment, the live capabilities, you're off basically all day long, virtually 24-7 at any time, to cover a news story, and you can cover it as it's happening. Yeah, some crews don't even come back. Well, I remember the, when just going to videotape, I, I was at the transition at 22 mm -hmm. when they went from film to videotape, and, and Putnam was, he was always an innovator. He, saw, he looked at uh, the three-quarter inch tapes, he said, this is your future. He ripped out all the film processes and everything else, and he, and he completely went to that. 
And that's when it really started to change because it was more instant. Because I remember the old-time photogs, yeah. they hated the transition from film yeah. because you had to pull and, it out, white yeah. balance and everything else instead of just pick up and shoot. And, you know, local news today is driven by live shots, live news coverage, as we all know. And we have the capability now through uh, what units are called live U units. Mm -hmm. They're basically backpacks that a photographer can put on their back, go to a respective location. If you can get a cell signal, out of that location, you can go live. And that has, uh, that has done away with all the previous restrictions you had in terms of going live before you'd have to uh, get a satellite truck, a satellite signal, or get a uh, you know, view of your tower on a mountain. So it was very, very limited. Now, you virtually can go live anywhere, and that's what drives local news today, the live coverage. Well, if you look at the Boston Marathon bombing coverage, Sandy Hook shootings and things like that, you, we, we wouldn't have been able to do that without that. It would cost prohibitive. Plus, at the time, getting a satellite truck to be able to do it. Dave, you brought up her name a minute ago, one of the real legends in the business overall, and certainly in this market, Bill Putnam. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember working at Channel 40 against him, and boy, you didn't want to because yeah. something good new came on the market. He didn't buy one. He bought 10 of them. He really was innovative, and I mean, he did that w with everything. I mean, he and Kitty, uh, when you, when you think back to, to the, the early 50s, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Bill, uh, from everything I've been told and read, he, he saved uh, UHF television because it was back in the time where you used to have a box on top, and, and he went before Congress and said, if you don't integrate these things, we're not going to survive. Kitty Broman was first woman yeah. everything in this market and just about yeah. all television you got to know her a little bit in the years she and, she and barbara bernard, barbara bernard uh, who, who barbara, both yeah. befriended me they were the people who paved the way for us yeah. um, there still weren't a lot of women but in this market we were well received i think on the heels of kitty and barbara yeah, you know jim i feel very fortunate i think dave and kathy probably feel the same way we were fortunate in that when we started in this business we had great mentors um, mm -hmm. durham caldwell was the news director at our station hired me, Keith, Keith Silver with, with uh, Dave. And these were great newsmen for local news operations. They were really, really good newsmen. They knew the business. They knew how to write. They knew how to gather news. And you learned a lot from them. Uh, they were great teachers. And really, I, I, I they think... They were tough on you, too, huh? Th and that was the good part. I learned part. some new words. They, yeah. And God forbid, you wouldn't want to mispronounce a word if Durham was listening. Oh. Because he'd be on that phone in two seconds, and, and he'd, he'd let you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's no H in our yeah. Amherst. It's not, don't yeah. you know, as you go along, too, you hear their voices in your head? Mm -hmm. yes. As you, yes. you know, and, they, and they do guide you. They yeah. set yeah. the bar for us. They really yeah. do. And, and as a result, I have to say, I think Western Massachusetts has benefited because the level of broadcasting mm -hmm. for a small market has mm -hmm. been extraordinary because of those people who held us accountable. And I, and I think that that's the risk today when we talk about the technology being allowing us to do it faster and easier. We have to always weigh and, the, the benefit of that. And don't forget, Jim, back in those days, you know, you didn't have autocorrect, you didn't have spell check. Mm -hmm. You had a typewriter with six-ply carbon paper, and you'd yeah. write your scripts on that. And they weren't electric at first. Yeah, they, they, right. were, <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were manual <laughs> typewriters, so... Yeah, you pounded them because you, you had did. to get those six copies through. Yeah. That's yeah. why I remember when we went, when, at 22, we went to electric typewriters and Cy Becker was breaking them on a regular <laughs> basis because he was pounding the keys so hard. He probably still does. Uh. <laughs> I want to bring up one name, a guy that I think we all knew to some extent, and, and he certainly he set the bar and did a lot of the first stuff in terms of weather, a guy named John Quill. You worked oh with him for a lot of years. I, worked with, I did my audition with John Quill uh, in, in 1979, and... Uh, you know, it was uh, John. When we went to computer technology, he just didn't. He didn't like it. He didn't buy into it. He said, "You need to go outdoors." And and, and he would he would plot and everything else. And uh, you know, he again he was. He always ran outside, didn't he? Before, he always ran outside. He wanted to see. He wanted to know. He always ran outside. Nothing better and, than a window to see the weather. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that, it does help. And he, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I can remember one of the first stories I covered there was in 1979, the tornado in Windsor Locks. And John was all over that. And it got to see him at work, somebody I had watched all of my life, uh, it, was, it was impressive. Uh, yeah, a real local legend. I, I never worked with John. I worked at 40, he worked at 22. But, I mean, to this day, we'll go out on the road and people will come up to you and say, did you know John Quill? Did you work with John Quill? Because uh, they remember him and his presence uh, in this area for, for weather forecasting. And he was also a great dancer. 
I learned yes. that over the years. John a, Quill could dance. dance. <laughs> <laughs> he was a ballroom dancer, wasn't he? Was, he was. He certainly was, was, yeah. And a very Many gracious talents. man. We very talk about man. the camaraderie in You'll this know. market. I remember John calling me on the phone, and I had never met him in person, but he had gotten ill and was in the hospital, and I wrote him a little note. Mm -hmm. And he called me on the phone, and he said, I can't get over this. Isn't this wonderful that I, somebody uh, who's, you know, across the street at the other station would to take the time to write me a note. So that just sort of <laughs> sums up the kind of environment that we got to uh, to work in, which yeah. was terrific. No problem. You should call him Weather Feather. Yeah. And, and one of the first things he pressed me on, he said, I don't care what you do. He said, you get that man to say how much snow we're going to have. I said, but Mr. Putnam, you can't do it. How can I? <laughs> I thought I was going to lose my job if I didn't. So I went to John and I said that to him. I said, I think I'm going to get fired if you don't say how much snow we're going to get. <laughs> so he did it that once. Oh, goodness. <laughs> but it, it was a different feeling then, wasn't it? I mean, there, so much happens now and the hours are so long. You pointed out there's hours and hours of news in the morning where there never was. Yeah. But there, it seems in the past, perhaps, there was a different kind of closeness to a folk, like a John Quill. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I, from a perspective of being a... Maybe not so many channels was the factor, but ex something. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. even yeah. Uh, being on the road every day uh, back then, we'd, you know, we'd gather our news by knocking on doors, going out to city halls, police stations, fire stations, etc., this was the days before uh, the computers, before Facebook, before Twitter, before email. Mm -hmm. So you, you had to go out and dig and search and scratch. Uh, nowadays, uh, there's such a plethora of different uh, ways of getting the news through Facebook tips, through emails, mm -hmm. uh, through the social media aspect. If you go back to the June 20, the tornado, yeah. I mean, we're, a lot of the information we were getting, I think that's when I really first saw the impact of, of Twitter and Facebook, that mm -hmm. the information we were getting from the field, and it helped us, it helped us tell the story where to go, where not to go. And uh, it, it, that, that then, it just, okay, this is, this is going to last. It's more <laughs> interactive because yeah. the audience can take part in all of those feeds mm -hmm. and social um, reporting, if you will. Yeah. And, I, and yeah. I think that's kind of an interesting part about the, the new age. Yeah. And the feedback is immediate. It is I mean, it is immediate. You'll know seconds after you do something or say something, and boom, you know, people are responding. Yeah. That's uh, different. Yeah. Because when they write to me, they say, Ray? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> well, we tell you about planes to send <laughs> We all answer to almost anything. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's we the have lesson. through the years. But great seeing all of you. Thanks for coming in. Great having this talk. Pleasure. Thanks. Our pleasure.